Welcome back to another episode of How To With Hammer Fab. This week, we're gonna be cutting out this firewall on this uh, 66 GMC, um, same as a C10. And we're gonna install this panel that we made a while back in one of our seminars. So stay tuned and check it out. We'll show you how to do it from start to finish. We're getting ready to get started on the 66 GMC firewall conversion. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with this stock firewall. It's actually really solid. This truck is very solid, um, but we want something a little more custom. This truck's gonna have kind of a rough and tough feel to it. Um, it's gonna have the original exterior with the patina and everything, but we're gonna install this uh, firewall panel that you see down below here that's in bare metal. This is not one that we bought. This is a firewall that we handmade right here at Hammerfab in one of our metal shaping seminars. We had about 10 guys come from all over the country. Um, you know, they planned their trip way in advance, signed up on our website, hammerfab.com. And then we just kind of got together and made this firewall um, specifically to fit a truck like this. So we made it, I, I made it in mind for this truck. Um, but we actually fit that to another truck. It was a 1960 Chevy truck, um, which is very, pretty much the same thing, very similar. So now what we're gonna do is show you how to cut off this old firewall and install the new one. I wanted to tell you guys about a couple of things here that we're gonna do a little bit different than a factory firewall. Our firewall looks a little bit bigger. That's because it is. So instead of uh, cutting it off and attaching it here, we're going to cut this whole shelf off, which is about an inch and a quarter deep, and we're gonna put the new firewall on this face. So that's gonna gain us an inch and a quarter of uh, engine bay clearance. It's gonna really help us out right here in these corners for valve covers and stuff like that. So um, still not sure if we're gonna end up using some of the original hump. We may use some of that. Um, but even if we do use some of that original uh, hump back there, we're probably going to have to make a transition piece in the middle here somewhere. So that's the plan. The, the firewall that we're going to be installing is thicker than the original sheet metal. So we're using 14 gauge mild steel instead of 18 or even 16 gauge. Um, if you guys are doing a firewall, going to make it on your own, I don't recommend anything thinner than 16 gauge. So this is a structural part of the vehicle. You wanna make sure it's nice and beefy. All right, guys, I wanna talk about something here that, that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, as a metal shaper, metal fabricator, I've been doing this a long time. Um, I know some of the reasons why not to do things a certain way. So one of the things that really bugs me is uh, stacking a new firewall panel on top of the old firewall. To me, that is a no bueno. Um, it's easier to stack it right on top of the old one, but trust me guys, in the end, it's gonna end up causing you some problems on your truck, especially if it's a truck that you wanna keep for a while and, and you don't want paint issues blowing up on you later or something like that. Um, whenever you stack a new panel on top of an old panel and just you know weld it around the edges, what you're doing is you're creating basically a cavity in there that moisture builds up in and it causes rust really fast. And it starts, to, it starts to swell and it blows up. And you're probably not gonna see this happen initially, but what'll happen is it'll start cracking around the edges and it'll cause paint failure. And it's just not right, guys. So um, the way I teach how to do it is, we show you how to actually cut it out, make the new panel and butt weld it into place instead of stacking it on top. When you're doing a firewall like this, specifically when you, you chop it back all the way and put it back an inch and a quarter further back to this level here like we're gonna be doing, there's a couple of things you need to know. There's some specific uh, things that we need to be able to transfer into the new firewall. One of which is the master cylinder location or uh, where the pedal pushes on the master cylinder. So a couple of bolts here we need to keep. We need to keep these two, the horizontal bolts, because those fit a standard master cylinder, even an aftermarket stuff. So, and then it'll end up having a push rod coming through there like that again. We do not need the two diagonal holes at this point. Um, so all that's gonna get chopped off anyways, but right behind the firewall here is a bracket. There's a bracket that, there's two arms that go back 
and there's a swing and pedal assembly and it mounts to the dash and all this kind of stuff. It's a structural part of what's going on here. And so we need that, but because the firewall is going back an inch and a quarter, we need to chop that bracket and section it and slide it back an inch and a quarter as well and re-weld it together. Um, and then, so what we want in the end is we want that bracket touching the back of the firewall just like it did originally. That way, when you push on the brakes, you're gonna be putting a lot of force on that firewall. You don't want the firewall to start flexing and moving on you. So that's another reason why we do them out of 14 gauge instead of thinner metal. These brackets are gonna have to go. So these are the brackets that held the original inner fenders to the truck. Well, we're scrapping those inner fenders. They're not gonna work with our wheel and tire combination. And we're gonna do something completely custom in the engine bay. It's gonna be really cool. So stay tuned, we're gonna do a video on that too. But until then, we need to chop these brackets off. But we're gonna do it in such a way that looks nice in the end. We're gonna reuse this lower part of the bracket and then we're just gonna kind of round it up into the new firewall and, and eliminate these tabs. Also on this firewall hump, it's a nice looking shape. I wanna try and maybe utilize that. It should flow into our new firewall pretty well. There's a couple of things I wanna keep. One of them is this lower flange that the transmission hump bolts to. And then if I can, I'd like to be able to retain the stock mounting location for the, for the gas pedal. That's what bolts right here on this angled pad because if you gotta try and figure all that out all over again, it's a lot of work. Now you could use an aftermarket gas pedal if you want, or if you have a, a, a system that has a, a wireless gas pedal, fly by wire, you know, you could do that as well, and then you don't need to keep this. First thing we're gonna do is get this old firewall out of the way. So we've gotta make some strategic cuts here. Um, they don't have to be real precise. They're just gonna be rough cuts just to get most of this out of the way. Um, but we do need to make sure that we're putting them in the right spot. We don't want to cut too much. Um, we don't want to have to go back and rebuild things. Ideally, it'd be nice to just be able to put the firewall on there and, and leave, leave the existing metal a little bit long in certain areas and then slowly fit it and fit it and fit it and grind the old material back until the new one fits just perfect. So we're just going to rough cut the old firewall, get it out of the way, and then we can test fit the new piece. I'm gonna use some fine line tape here, um, just so you guys can quickly see um, about where I'm gonna be cutting, okay? This is not a real accurate mark, this is just something kinda quick and dirty. So we're gonna cut right above this tape. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a flange up here because we're gonna utilize that flange, initially at least, to drill into, and you can either use a screw or a Clico to clamp the firewall in place once we get the new one on there. No, oh, tape's not gonna stick to that oil. So anyways, it's not gonna stick to this dirt. So anyways, that's pretty much where we're gonna rough cut. And that'll leave most of the tunnel there. Um, we'll get this stuff out of the way. And uh, so we're gonna use some cutoff wheels, probably an air hack saw. Um, and we'll need to do probably a lot of grinding just to get everything fitting just right. <laughs>
Now's a good time to get all the rats' nests out of here. Okay, now that we got the initial bulk of the old firewall cut off of there, we still got some more cutting to do. But you, you know, you want to take it slow and don't cut too much. But now you can see the bracket that I was telling you about that's behind here. So see how it's sticking out now? Well, we're going to have to unbolt that from the truck and then take a measured inch and a quarter approximately out of there and then re-weld it together. So now that we've got most of that firewall out of the way, we still got to trim some back. So if you can kind of see right here, this is where we want to be. We still got to trim this back about half of an inch and then we're going to have to trim this back about another inch or so. Uh, but we want to creep up on it so we don't cut too much. So right now what I'm going to do is, right here, I'm going to cut right behind that flange. And what that's going to end up doing for me is, this will get welded out here, but this one won't get welded. We don't want to weld this to the firewall, but what we'll do later on is we'll seam seal that to the firewall so that fumes and air and water and stuff doesn't get inside the cab. So um, that can be seam sealed from underneath and from in here. So, let's get that out of the way. Smells kind of good. Smells like cookies, bacon. But it's really just rat nests. I'm just going to draw like a rough guesstimate line in there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sweet, that's gonna work out good. Okay, so now what I wanna do is, I've got the bottom cut back about as far as it needs to go. We'll just need to grind it a little bit. Now I left the tunnel here a little bit long because if I, because it's at an angle like this, if you just keep cutting it, we're gonna end up with a gap between this panel and our new panel. So I don't want that. I don't wanna have to add a little strip in there somewhere. I wanna nail it. I wanna get this to perfectly fit the new piece. And so how we're gonna do that is we're gonna creep up on it. And so we're gonna radius this edge a little bit with a hammer and dolly by hand right here on the truck and just kind of roll it out of the way. So, so we're gonna roll it back instead of cutting it back. And that way there won't be a gap between this panel and the other panel. Also in that process, <clears throat> I wanna try and eliminate this little dent right here cause it's ugly. So if we could smooth that out, man, it would look a lot better. So we'll just get rid of that with some hammer and dolly. We might have to slice it once or something cause it might need to gather up. So let's do that. So I've got a T-dolly here, and this is just a metal forming tool. You can make them at home if you want. Actually, I've had this one since I was like 14. I made it out of some old John Deere parts. A little fun fact for you. So I still use some of that kind of stuff. But anyways, it's just a piece of uh, solid metal with a specific radius on it. We're gonna use it to form this around there. So I've got it wedged in there right now, and then I'll, I'll use a couple of other dollies uh, around the edge as we work, work it around. Whoops. Doesn't want to stay. Move here. Another dolly. Now see that big wrinkle right there? That's either gonna have to get cut or torched. I'm thinking torch. Chip Foose actually taught me this on overhauling, believe it or not. We were working on a 56 Chevy at Wild Tech on overhauling and there was a big bump like this in the firewall and, a, and there was a blister in the hood. Chip Foo said, hey, get the torch out and just get it red hot and beat on it. Yeah, I was kind of shocked that Chip Foose would say, get the, get the old fire ax out. But he's Chip Foose for a reason. He knows what he's doing. We're gonna get this red hot. It's kind of hard to tell with the old paint on there, but Eventually it'll burn off of there and uh, you just don't want to melt it away. You want to get it nice and soft and then don't touch it with your hands obviously. You know you might want to get some gloves. I'm gonna probably not get gloves right this second but it's getting nice and cherry red right now. I'm gonna set the torch down. And quickly. All right, we got to hit it again. The goal here is to try and shrink that metal back together. She just got soft right there. Keep doing that a couple of times.
There you go, the dent's gone. Now we're gonna quench it. That's gonna really help shrink it up. Okay, now it's all cooled off. Now we can, now we can continue rolling our radius like we were doing. That's also called shrinking, but that's called cold shrinking. What I just did to that corner, basically you just hammer the metal around and as those wrinkles start to compress together, that's, that's what's called cold shrinking. Sometimes you can do that if it's just a little bit of metal, but if it's something bigger like that, you need to get some heat on it. Okay, let's work it back across the top. Okay, now we're gonna come over to this side. Yeah, see? Aren't you glad we folded that flange over? So we would have needed some extra metal right there. All right, we're ready to uh, Clico this thing in place. And now, I've already got a center line marked on this panel right here. And then this screw is right in the center of the truck. So we're gonna line up that mark with that screw side to side, get our up and down height-wise where we want it and then drill a couple of Clico holes. Then we can really kind of step back and see, uh, see about dialing the fitment in on everything. All right, now that we've got the firewall positioned up on there, we've cut away enough material where we can actually hold it back pretty much where it needs to go. Now we're gonna do the final step of dialing all these edges in. First thing we gotta do is attach the upper edge to that existing flange that we left over and we're gonna, we're gonna do that with some Clicos. Now Clico is a little uh, clamping device. It's for the aviation industry, uh, for building airplanes and stuff. And so what you do is you drill a hole through both panels, use some special pliers to squeeze it through there, and then release it and it clamps it together. So these are special Clico pliers, and this is a Clico, Clico. C-L-E-C-O. You put it in there, you squeeze it, and then, I don't know if you can see that, but that's the released position. And then when you squeeze it, it gets skinnier, and then you stick it through there. And then once you go through both panels, you release, and then when you release, it swedges and locks in there. So first thing we need to do is, is line up the center line with that screw which we're pretty close. Uh, actually, yeah, we're right on the money. So then the next thing is we need to just kind of adjust the side to side before we drill any holes. We don't want to get too high with it because we don't want, uh, we don't want this body line getting too much closer to this. Um, and we'll explain that more. Uh, well, it's for a roll cage pad, but we're going to show in a different video how we developed this pad, making the pattern, how we transferred it into the computer and have it laser cut and everything. So stay tuned for that video. And then also I noticed when we cut the firewall out, this upper flange got kind of weak and it, it sprung up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do before I drill those holes, I'm just gonna lightly pull some pressure just down gently. Um, I'm kind of guessing, but it's only about an eighth of an inch. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
drill your hole, install Clico and release. Squeeze, release. Okay, now once you get two of them, you don't have to worry about it rotating anymore, so you should be good to go to get the other ones. One thing to note when doing Clicos, you always do one Clico at a time. You drill a hole, Clico it. Drill a hole, Clico it. Drill a hole, Clico it. Don't drill a whole bunch of holes and then expect them all to line up later. They won't. So you just do one at a time, and that way you know everything's gonna line up. Okay, now what that does is that allows us to unclamp this. And now, as we're final adjusting all the edges, we can quickly install and uninstall this panel and put it in the exact same spot every time. Now, there's a couple of things that we want to adjust here. Um, for the most part, I like the way this, this hump is gonna work out. Um, we're gonna be able to utilize the stock throttle pedal location. We're gonna be able to maintain where this trans tunnel uh, seam is. But there's a couple of things that we need to make a little bit better. So, I'd like to make this transition from this curve to this curve a little more subtle. And so we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to shape this a little bit more. So right now it's kinda at that, this is kinda at this angle. We're gonna have to unbend it and then bend it some more to line up with this. And same thing on this side. We're gonna have to just kinda hammer and dolly that around a little bit so that these line up better. This side won't need as much work as this side, but they're pretty much the same thing. Um, and then up at the top, you can see here, I can get my, get my hand up in there because this top of the stock tunnel is about two inches taller than what we want. And so since we won't be using a, an engine that has a rear mounted distributor, we don't really need that extra height. And so we want it to look cooler. We're more concerned with it looking cool. And so what we'll do down here is we'll chop some of this off and we'll make a new panel right here that comes down and grafts in right down here somewhere. Um, and in the end, we'll try and make it where it looks like it all flows together. We've got some excess metal down here on the bottom. I did that on purpose when we made the firewall. So we'll end up trimming off most of this flange on the bottom and then we'll radius it just a little bit to flow into the tow boards. Um, and then that should get us pretty close to being ready to, to weld this thing in. All right, we're gonna reform this corner right here and right there where those marks are. Basically, we wanna chase this radius that way a little bit. We're gonna do that by hand with a hammer and dolly. Look at that, looks so much better already. I'm gonna put these Clicos back in. Then I'm gonna drill another, at least one hole down here, maybe two for Clicos. Let's do one right here. Okay, so I don't really like the way it's fitting right there. I love the way it fits right there. So I'm gonna go on the back side and hammer the blue part out a little bit. Does that fit better? Yeah. Now that fits really nice right there. Now that's something we can weld. Once we cut that, that's gonna weld up so nice. 
Okay, so that side's pretty good. Now let's do the same thing to the other side. Okay, a little bit of adjusting right in here. That's pretty good right there. It's ready for a click -o. Now that fits just as nice as that side. And that's gonna look like it came that way from the factory. All right, I'm gonna grab some squeeze clamps and just squeeze this out here like this and then we can trace it on the inside. Okay, now when I, I've got this squeezed down, I've got a clear coat all around. Now I just wanna kinda visually glance at it from the side and see how straight it is. So to me, it looks pretty stinking straight all the way across there. Got some dirt on the screen there, man. <laughs> Looking at the back side of the firewall now, um, I did what I told you guys not to do. I cut too much. See how I can get my finger in there? I was trying to avoid that, but it's not too late. We still got time to fix that. So thankfully I left the flange on the firewall about two inches too long. So what that's gonna allow me to do is, well, instead of leaving the firewall flat, and welding it like this. Well, now I've got a gap and the flange is long. We're just gonna roll it up like that and turn it into part of the floor. So we'll curve the bottom of the firewall and basically that'll give us the opportunity to weld it just a little bit further back right here and take care of that extra that we accidentally cut off. So right now what I'm gonna do is, I kinda know I need at least that much metal left on the firewall all the way across. Cause I want to do that. If we're going to do it over here, might as well do it over there so that it matches side to side. So um, it's not the end of the world, just a little bit of an adjustment on the fly. Okay, we're going to work on some of the final fitment on this top edge. We got to cut this notch out here because that's where um, the little corner panel sits. We got to cut this here to fit a little bit better. Basically we're going to prep it so that when we put it on, um, here in a little bit, we'll be ready to scribe everything, take it off one last time, cut everything, and then hopefully put it on for good. Okay, now this is the mark that I had on the firewall on the, the side that was bad. And so I was able to mark it in there like that. So I'm going to add just a little bit more. And that looks like about an inch and an eighth. Let's measure it and see. 
Oh, inch and three sixteenths, so close. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna stretch that across there. We're gonna cut off an inch and three sixteenths all the way across. We got our firewall trimmed down, ground down smooth. We got these inner edges fitting good. We got the top edge fitting good. We trimmed off about an inch off the bottom. Um, we're gonna bend, uh, gonna bend this flange under a little bit to basically turn it into the floor. But there's a little bit of a discrepancy side to side. And I'm trying to figure out where it is, but I'm pretty sure it's on the tow boards because it's, uh, it's a significant difference. So on that side, we're gonna have to make the bend mark. Uh, yeah, we could probably cheat that one a little bit higher. Let's, let's ignore this line I just did. We'll move that bend mark up about to about three quarters of an inch. And then I think if we do that, then I can cheat this side and make it the same. So let's do that. I like things that look symmetrical, especially like this engine bay. You know, you're gonna be looking in and seeing it, and if something's not symmetrical, your eye picks up on it. And it looks like you messed up when maybe, you know, maybe not necessarily messed up, but that's just the way it had to be. So if we can, if we have the opportunity to make it better, Let's make it better. Okay, we're gonna take this back off one more time, hopefully. Bend this on the bench by hand. That way, the angle of the tow board. And then we should be able to put it on, scribe the whole thing all the way around, take it off, cut it, and weld it on. And then the only thing we'll have to do later after it's welded on is basically like somewhere right in here, We're gonna make a piece that comes up here like this. And that, that's gonna work out good because we can get rid of that hole. That little guy was in the way the whole time. Not anymore. We're gonna get rid of him and that one. See, we're filling holes and making a custom firewall at the same time. We got the panel over on the bench. This is our bin mark, this top one. It, this thing is so huge that we can't really get it in the sheet metal brake right now. It's kind of awkward, so we're gonna have to do it by hand. So what we're gonna do is clamp this panel down so it can't move on us using some really strong C-clamps. And then we're gonna use the edge of the bench as our bending mark. So we're gonna hit it straight down over the edge of the bench. Okay, so let's clamp this down. Just make sure you don't damage your panel when you're clamping it. Okay, you ready? Okay, that's gonna get that side pretty close. I'm just guessing on the angle. But it should be really close. All right, now we're doing the other side. I got some wrinkles there because I accidentally hit it too much, too aggressive in the beginning.
Okay, let's go put it on the truck. See that pucker right there? It didn't like that. I'm gonna have to shrink it right there somewhere. We might be able to cold shrink it. I'm gonna get the torch out right here in these corners. Okay, now I think I'm gonna go on the inside and drill out so that I'm pushing down on the floor. See how it's doing that? I don't want it to come away from the firewall. I want it to come this way. So I'm gonna drill into it and then put some screws in it to hold it down real tight. So while you're beating on this and getting it to fit better, sometimes the Clecos tend to wanna pop out. So what I use is these little sheet metal screws. And then you can use the same hole. And that holds it down a lot tighter. That's just temporary. Don't screw your firewall on for, for like the final step. We're gonna weld it still. We are ready to scribe around the edges of the firewall so we can take it off hopefully one last time. We'll trim the truck. We're gonna leave the, the Clico tabs on the truck just a little bit. And then I'll show you guys how you can utilize those to make sure it lands in the same spot when we put it on. Uh, we'll make some final cuts, put it on one last time. And we can start welding this bad boy in. Okay, now we want to keep our Clico holes. We don't want to lose those for right now at least. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to chop vertically through them and then we'll cut everything in between the Clico holes off, just leaving one little tab. See, there's my little tab. There's one, two, Three.
Okay, we did the final trimming on the perimeter of the firewall, the old firewall. Um, the next thing I was gonna do is show you guys a little trick on these tabs. So these are the little holes that we left for the Clecos. We just left a little bit of the original sheet metal all the way around. That way we can put it back in the exact same spot. And so like this upper edge got real flimsy on us now that we've removed the structure. Well, these will help us put it right back and we know that we don't have to guess where that goes now because the hole's still there to locate it. So, but what we wanna do is we wanna crank those tabs back just the metal thickness. So what I do is I use some smooth jaw pliers and grab the, grab the metal. Sometimes you have to do it sideways like this. And you bend it back and then you grab it a little bit lower and bend it right back out. So basically, all we did was we kind of joggled, just kind of joggled that tab back. It doesn't have to be much, you know, basically just trying to get the tab out of the way so that it doesn't obstruct the firewall when we put it on this last time, just like that. Now what we're gonna do is just real quick, grind this edge right, on, right past the scribe line down to bare metal all the way around so we can get a real nice weld in there. We are ready to TIG weld. We're gonna tack this thing together here in a few spots, making sure that this floppy thing lines up right with that corner. If we make sure and just take our time and do that all the way around, it's gonna tighten right back up and, and look just like we never did anything. So we're just gonna kind of pick a spot and go one direction and then go the other direction. We don't wanna jump around too much at this point, okay? You wanna zip it up like a zipper. We wanna start here and zip it together like that. When you start jumping around too much, what happens is you, you end up with a lump that gets stuck in the middle like that. When you're trying to force it down, it, it doesn't wanna go and so it ends up with lumps everywhere. So when you just kind of go in one direction for the most part, um, it eliminates that. So might as well start right here in the middle. It's kind of hard to get it lined up at first. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start just off to the left of the middle. Right now I'm just doing fusion tack. So what that is, is you're, you're not using any fill rod. You know, later on, once we really weld this thing solid, we'll use some fill rod. But right now what I'm doing is just getting the two pieces of metal to touch and then hitting it with a hot arc and it zaps the metal together. Okay, now right here where our tab was, it, the metal's not wanting to go under there. So we're gonna have to cut that tab out of the way pretty soon. So. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go back the other direction. Same thing here. We're going to have to get rid of that tab before we go too much farther right there. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's just get rid of those tabs and keep going that direction. So now we can take those Clecos out. Not all of them, just those two. And then we want to take the little uh, cutoff or the little hacksaw like that, just enough so we can see that little little tab. Okay, perfect. See how it sucked up, flush now. Do the same thing over here. Perfect. Now let's go back this way a little bit. We're still working from the inside out. We're just doing a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to get a smaller screwdriver. One of these little guys is one of the handiest things you can have when doing something like this, because what we want to do is, we want to get it between there and control the panels like this. See how you can 
You can control this one in and out and you can control that one up and down. That's what we want to do right now. And we might get a body, body hammer involved here. So we're going to get this metal up. We need this piece to go under this piece. Um, and then just going to tack that previous tap. Sorry, tap the previous tack a little bit just to help it go, get going that direction. Okay. It's going to fight us a little bit there. There we go. Now, once you get that like that, this is a little tricky, but it takes some practice. By yourself, it's tricky. Okay, I think I am gonna slice it right there just a little bit. <coughs> That's all I wanna do, just remove just a little bit of material there. Now, I can put a little bit of fill rod right there. Right there. Whoa. Some rust under there, I didn't like. Bit of, I'm gonna slice through that a little bit. I'm just gonna kinda fill it, weld that. <clears throat> Metal's old right there and thin, probably rusty on the back side. It's easy to blow a hole in it. So the way you fix that is, notice I was pointing the tungsten like that towards the old metal. Well, the way you prevent blowing holes through it is you turn the tungsten more towards the new metal. Now what we're gonna have to do down here on this corner after we get it all welded in, we'll come back and make a separate little corner that finishes, like a little box that finishes this off. Um, that way it still looks the same from the front and all this will be behind the fender anyway, so it doesn't really matter if we add a little corner right there. You guys might be wondering, why aren't you wearing gloves? Well, you can wear gloves if you want. Obviously you saw me burn my finger earlier, but with TIG welding, as long as, your, as long as your hand or whatever isn't in the path of the arc, it doesn't get that hot. And as long as you don't lay your hand on a spot weld, you'll be okay. Um, now when I, when I do tack welding, I don't like wearing gloves because they're kind of they're clunky and I need, to, I need to hold little things and finagle things around. And so it's easier for me to just quickly tack it and just 
try not to get burned. And then once we do the final welding, I'll put some gloves on and then we can rock and roll and don't have to worry about burning ourselves. All right, now we're gonna just pick a side and we're gonna have to kind of force it together in some spots. Um, but we're just gonna pick a spot, tack it, and then just start fitting it. I'm gonna get that Clico out of the way. Now that we've got it tacked, I can cut that tab. I'm gonna have to get a little fill right on that, so this gets tricky doing it by yourself. Now see, it looks like we're way off, but if you trust your scribe line, it'll all come right back together, just like a zipper. It's gonna zip up. Just give that tack a little bit of time to cool and it pulls the metal together. Let that cool for a second. Now I'm gonna come down here Take this Clico out. We don't need that anymore.
All right, so what we did was grind down the majority of the welds, which wasn't much because it's a TIG weld, um, with an electric um, grinder with 50 grit on it. I have a rule in my shop. We don't use any abrasives more coarse than 50 grit. That have reasons why, but you have to take a class or something for me to tell you the whole story. There's a lot behind it. So, but anyways, we did 50 grit, and then we, after that, we put on a Scotch Bright uh, media. Well, no, it's a coarse Scotch Bright. Um, uh, what do they call it? Surface prep kind of disc, and that what that purpose is is to blend out the 50 grit scratches. Okay. Now after that, we're going to switch to 80 grit on a DA. Uh, DA means dual action. It's a dual action sander, so it rotates and it oscillates. Okay, so we're going to do that to blend out the Scotch Bright scratches, and then once we do that all the way around, we're going to do one last little trick with an orbital sander and a Scotch Bright pad. We're going to use a little bit of this Gibbs oil. Uh, it's great for automotive shops. It's a penetrant kind of oil, but it's body shop friendly. So that's why we like it. So we're going to put a little bit of this on scotch Bright pad on a <laughs> orbital sander. This is a little bit different than a DA sander, but um, scotch Bright pad fits on there really good. We're going to just spray a little bit on here and then massage it into the metal. Now we just want to wipe off the excess. You know, there's still going to be a thin film of oil all over this whole thing. And what that's going to do is just preserve it, keep it from flash rusting. And, uh, you know, if you keep oil in it a little bit, every now and then it'll keep it real nice and bare metal until you can get it to the body shop. And then all they have to do is wipe it with some lacquer thinner, prep it for paint, you're good to go. You don't have to clean off any more rust, just keep it oiled. It's body shop friendly, it doesn't have silicone in it, so why not? 
yeah, it's a little bit expensive, but it's better than sand and rust off 72 times. So anyways, there it is. All right, well, we got our firewall installed on a 66 GMC. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of information, this took us about 10 hours to install it, just to install it. Um, took about another, let's call it 15 hours to make the panels. Um, these are 14 gauge cold finish steel. Um, the beads are stamped using our Pole Max uh, machine. Uh, we did this one in a, in a class, so I showed several guys how to do this. So um, it yields some really nice results if you uh, know a few guidelines to follow. Um, we utilize the stock tunnel, so that allows us to keep the stock gas pedal. And we chopped off that front layer of the firewall, so we actually gained about an inch and a quarter of valve cover clearance, and that'll let the master cylinder and the brake booster sink back about an inch and a quarter. Um, so all we have to do next is shorten the brake pedal bracket the push rod arm, and we got to redo these. Uh, we got to kind of cap these brackets off down here. We'll do that later. It's not real fun to watch. And then we got to make a little little corner box right here um, to finish that off a little bit. But uh, basically, turned out real good, nice and solid. No, it's not caving in on us anywhere. So that's what we want. And then the brake pedal bracket will, will mount right to the back of this right here. We'll get the master power brake uh, booster on there with the bare brakes master cylinder. We got that stuff coming right now. And uh, yeah, we're plan the plan is to paint this basically from, from under the cowl down uh, like a semi-gloss black satin or whatever you want to call it. And then the underneath of the cab will be bed linered. So yeah. All right, everybody, listen up. We got another video coming pretty soon on how to do a roll cage in our 66 GMC truck. But part of the roll cage is also the front down bars that come through the firewall and connect to the front of the frame rails. So you might be wondering what these notches were on our firewall. Well, those are deliberate. Those are gonna be little mounting, uh, locations for some pads that we're going to have laser cut. This is a, a really rough template, but this is kind of what we start with sometimes is some chipboard. We made a little template there, and then it's going to get a steel uh, bung welded to it right there with some really cool looking gussets on it and exposed fasteners. And basically the roll bar, roll cage bar is going to slip inside this and, and get welded just mainly for a cool looking mount to the firewall. And then the bar is going to come down and then bend down and connect to the frame. And then we plan on attaching inner fenders to that roll bar using our strip tabs. So stay tuned. You get to learn about strip tabs and all the ways that we do things here at Hammerfab. Yeah, that looks pretty cool.